Introduction We all know that liquids and gases are called fluids because of their ability to flow. The fluidity in both of these states is due to the fact that the molecules are free to move about. Matter exists in three states, namely solid, liquid and gas. The following are the characteristic properties of the solid state. Amorphous and crystalline solids. Solids can be classified as crystalline or amorphous on the basis of the nature of order present in the arrangement of their constituent particle. A crystalline solid usually consists of a large number of small crystals, each of them having a definite characteristic geometrical shape. An amorphous solid consists of particles of irregular shape. The structures of quads, crystalline, and quads glass, amorphous, are shown in figure A and B, respectively. Some of their physical properties like electrical resistance or refractive index show different values when measured along different directions in the same crystals. This arises from different arrangement of particles in different directions as shown. Since the arrangement of particles is different along different directions, the value of same physical property is found to be different along each direction. Differences between amorphous and crystalline solids. Crystalline solids are anisotropic in nature, whereas amorphous solids are isotropic in nature. It is because there is no long-range order in them and arrangement is irregular along all the directions. The other differences are shown in the table. Classification Crystalline solids can be classified on the basis of nature of intermolecular forces operating in them into four categories, namely molecular, ionic, metallic and covalent solids. Molecules are the constituent particles of molecular solids. These are further subdivided into the following categories as shown. Ionic solids. Ions are the constituent particles of ionic solids. Such solids are formed by the three-dimensional arrangements of cations and anions bound by strong electrostatic forces. These solids are hard and brittle in nature. They have high melting and boiling points. Given above are pictures of different three-dimensional representations of NaCl. Metallic solids. Metals are orderly collection of positive ions surrounded by and held together by a sea of free electrons. These electrons are mobile and are evenly spread out throughout the crystal. Each metal atom contributes one or more electrons towards this sea of mobile electrons. These free and mobile electrons are responsible for high electrical and thermal conductivity of metals. When an electrical field is applied, these electrons flow through the network of positive ions. The conventional simple cubic unit cell and face-centered cubic lattice of metallic solids are shown above. Covalent or network solids. These are made up of atoms connected by covalent bonds. The intermolecular forces are covalent bonds as well, characterized as being very hard with very high melting points and being poor conductors. Examples of this type of solid are diamond and graphite. As you can see above, graphite has only 2D hexagonal structure and therefore is not hard like diamond. Types of solids. The different types of solids crystal lattices and unit cells. There are only 14 possible three-dimensional lattices. These are called Bravais lattices. The Bravais lattices are sometimes called space lattices. The lattices can be used to describe the geometrical symmetry of a crystal. 
all crystals can be described by one of the 14 arrangements as shown above. Unit Cells Unit cell is the smallest portion of a crystal lattice which, when repeated in different directions, generates the entire lattice. A unit cell is characterized by its dimensions along the three edges A, B and C. These edges may or may not be mutually perpendicular. Angles between the edges alpha between B and C, beta between A and C and gamma between A and B. Thus, a unit cell is characterized by six parameters A, B, C, alpha, beta and gamma. The structures of the unit cell for a variety of salts are shown above. Primitive unit cells and centered unit cells. Primitive cubic unit cell. Primitive cubic unit cell has atoms only at its corner. Each atom at a corner is shared between eight adjacent unit cells as shown in figure. Four unit cells in the same layer and four unit cells of the upper layer. Therefore, only one-eighth of an atom or molecule actually belongs to a particular unit cell. In figure, a primitive cubic unit cell has been depicted in three different ways. Figure A represents only the center of the particle occupying that position and not its actual size called as open structures. Figure B depicts space-filling representation of the unit cell with actual particle size and figure C shows the actual portions of different atoms present in a cubic unit cell. Body-centered cubic unit cell A body-centered cubic unit cell, an atom at each of its corners and also one atom at its body center. Figure depicts an open structure, space-filling model and the unit cell with portions of atoms actually belonging to it. It can be seen that the atom at the body center wholly belongs to the cell in which it is present. Face-centered cubic unit A face-centered cubic unit cell can close-packed structures. Close-packing in one dimension, there is only one way of arranging spheres. Close-packing in two dimensions. Close-packing in three dimensions. Let us take a two-dimensional hexagonal close-packed layer A, tetrahedral and octahedral, placing third layer covering octahedral voids. Locating tetrahedral voids. Let us consider a unit cell of CCP or FCC lattice. The unit cell is divided into eight small cubes. These structures are illustrated in the above figures. Locating octahedral voids. Packing efficiency. Efficiency of packing in body-centered cubic structures. Packing efficiency in a simple cubic lattice. Point defects. Types of point defects. Interstitial defects. Frenkel defect, Scott key defect, magnetic property of electrons.